Well, hello everybody and welcome to G-Bears Homesteading the Desert. We're looking at a roadrunner over there and uh, I'm looking right into the sun so it's kind of hard to see him but he's right under the bush over there and uh, he just came out from around the compost so I guess he likes it there. Let me close this down a little ways and we'll head on over here because I got something I got to show you. I've been uh, kind of hampered by wind lately and we've had some really strange weather out here the um, dust devils been kicking up like crazy yesterday i had two just all of a sudden pop up right in the center of the compound right where my van is parked and just shred things i mean threw them all over the place amazing and i've been watching around uh, i haven't seen that many today but uh, yesterday they were everywhere all right so, you remember I was saying, I got some weird looking cucumbers over here and we found out that those were actually cantaloupe. Well, those came out of the same package of seeds for, that these did. So as you can see they're plant, all planted in the same pot. But over here, what we have is cucumbers. And there's a little one right inside there. There's uh, another one right here. And there's a couple more down on the bottom down here I saw earlier. But, uh, yeah, there was, oh, there's a big one right there. Okay, so those came out of the same package. So somebody screwed up at the seed factory. They put half and half in there. Now, when I was eating some of the tomatoes that ripened earlier, I had a little piece and it was real juicy and I bit into it and some of the juice and seeds popped and look I got a tomato plant coming up cool got some watercress under there and that grass has gone to seed so I'm going to let it go a little bit further and drop some seeds around see if that sprouts anything new potatoes are sprouting again my uh, inside and outside cantaloupes are both doing well and nothing has touched that outside one. My um, sweet potatoes doing excellent. So, and uh, here's my holly oak tree. It's uh, pretty much triple in size since I brought it out. And uh, same thing with uh, these two shade trees. I don't remember the names of these. They had a scientific name, but uh, they, they are great um, shade trees. They get a really nice, big, solid, round canopy. And um, when I get those up to uh, par to where I don't have to worry about um, critters destroying the, the young roots, I'm gonna plant those on the sunny side of the cabin on this side because the containers take care of the other side. So on this side in the morning, I'll have some nice shade over there. All right, all my other plants here doing well. My, uh, my pears are looking good. And uh, this, this tree was looking a little sad. It looked like it might die off. So I, I fed it some nutrients and we got a bunch of fresh growth on it. So it's doing okay. It's, uh, it's not ready for the fall. All right, plenty of little flowers on my tomato plants, but uh, no fresh tomatoes yet. We'll see what happens there. Uh, I got flowers and peppers on both my plants. I'm not gonna dig through there to show you, but Here's my cloud potatoes, and they've all sprouted back up again. And I know some of you have been waiting for me to harvest those. Uh, here's my sunions. Um, I've pulled a few out of there and eaten them. My carrots, uh, my C-130 carrots, they're, they're all greening up again. So um, my purslane, got loads of purslane. I, I break branches off every now and then and stick them in other pots and, and uh, let it keep going because... Not only do I like eating it, but the uh, chickens like it too. All right, so I wanted to get that done uh, because uh, last night was the harvest moon and a gigantic moon came up uh, over the horizon at the exact same time that the sun was going down over the horizon. That was pretty cool. All right, as I'm heading this way, you can see up there the water tank. And I do have a broken beam on the platform underneath that I have to repair. 
and I've been draining that down and I'm almost there. I've got 150 gallons left in the tank. So I moved three of the blue barrels, empty blue barrels up there. So I've got um, the room to drain them out. So I'm gonna get that probably going next week where I can uh, uh, drain out the rest of the water and then I'll switch over to using water off of those two barrels up there. These two barrels down here are full. So I'll be able to pump some of that water back up as I need it. I still have my outdoor shower, but that line coming down there runs underground and comes up into the cabin. So I'll, uh, I'll still be able to keep using water while I'm doing the repairs because that's not gonna be an overnight thing. I've gotta slide the tank off and I've got to um, dis disconnect the lines and all of that. And I've got to disconnect the staircase because that's fastened to the uh, pedestal. <clears throat> Once I get everything off, then I can slide the pedestal, the top beams of the pedestal off with a, with a platform. And I'll have to do some repair work to that with some uh, Simpson ties. And then I'm going to put uh, some of these cinder blocks that are on this trailer. I'm going to put a center pedestal underneath the whole thing and uh, fill that with concrete. And then I got to let that dry at least a week before I can think about putting weight back on it again. So that's not going to be a fast thing. That's going to be a, a, a little drawn out. So I'll have to plan that out just exactly right. In the meantime, I'll, like I said, I'll just use this water here. And uh, the water I do pump down into those three barrels um, I can pump back into the tank after I put the tank back on there so that the, the winds won't blow it off of there. I've already disconnected all the straps to the uh, uh, garage door here so I can get ready to put that up. I've got the posts and the beams. I have to move the scaffolding. But I'm thinking about getting myself the, the new turbine here pretty quick and uh, getting that up there uh, so that through the winter when the, I get less sun during the day, at least my turbine will be making efficient electricity instead of that thing. Um, the winds have been blowing about 12 to 14 miles an hour on and off all day. And uh, that thing was only putting out maybe 30 watts. So that's, that's junk. It's, it's not worth my time, but it's there, so I'll let it run for now. All right, inside the cabin here uh, in the room edition, I uh, pulled the box off the wall and I'm starting to pipe my um, tankless water heater pipes. Uh, I've got to switch over to B-Vent when I go in the attic and uh, through the, penetrate through the roof. And I've got to cut a 12 by 12 hole in the roof to put the, that pipe up through so I have enough clearance around the B-Vent so it's a non, uh, a non flammable thing. Um, I have two more rings, like those four inch rings that are coming through the wall. Uh, one will go through the drywall on this side and the other one will go through the ceiling going up. And then on the top, of course, I just have wood clearance from it with what they call a roof jack. That's those uh, flashings that go over the pipe. And I also have to put one, a roof jack over the top of this two inch vent. But uh, that all gets done when the roofing's going on, not now. If I put them on there now, the wind will shred them. Speaking of which, I'm kind of glad that I never put any paper up on this thing because with the dust devils and the wind gusts that we've had over the past couple of days, I'd have wasted a roll of uh, tar paper, guaranteed. All right, let's see what I got left here. Um, tomorrow is uh, Social Security Day. It's a uh, payday, so I will probably run into town uh, go to Home Depot and um, at least pick up a few sheets of siding and a couple of other items I can use to get some more work done here. And so if I can get the, um, the siding on the, the first corner over there and all the stuff on the upper level, I've got to put a Z channel under there. Then um, I can finish the edge of the roofing with the one buys and then I can trim the, the roofing off and get my tar paper and my shingles down. Uh, my next run to the OC, I buy the shingles down there. They're cheaper than Home Depot is. Um, I get them at a HD supply and uh, I save quite a bit when I'm buying the shingles there. And they're 25 year, um, 275 mile an hour wind resistant 
shingles. And that's what's on the original cabin. I want to keep the same thing going across on here because I've been through some wind storms with those up there. And the only thing I lost was the cheap um, jerry rigged ridge cap that I put on there. But that didn't make the roof leak because I did a full weave over the top of that uh, ridge up there. And uh, even if the ridge cap blows off and I'm in a, a torrential downpour, water cannot get through to my cabin. All right, let's see if uh, there's anything else on my list before I do this uh, and cut this off. We covered the wind and dust devils, uh, payday HD run, the water tank, the cukes plants, and the harvest moon. I guess that's all for today, people. Thanks for joining me. And again, don't forget, um, if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up down there. It helps. Leave comments. Those help. I, I try to answer all comments on a, and questions on a very uh, timely basis. And also, if you haven't already, um, subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. I love subscribers. And uh, they're adding up. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. G-Bear signing off.